holds some spectacular habitats. And some retain their mystery. But we know much less about the ecosystems of our own body. Parts of the body are wet. Others are dry. Some are hot and dark. Others are cold and exposed to light. We are a world of different climate zones. And just as on Earth, on the human body too, life adapts to the environment. I started work in tropical forests, and every process I could study in a tropical forest is happening on my body and your body right now. You have species that are plants. You have species that eat those plants, and you have species that eat those species. You have species that are predators. You have species that are parasites. There's active competition, just the way the tree roots grow against tree roots, or ant colonies grow against ant colonies, that same thing is happening. Rob Dunn's background in ecology prepared him well for an exploration of the wildlife of our bodies. And one of the most intriguing places is the mysterious valley of smell, the armpit. The armpit's this weird thing. So why does it have hair? Why does it smell funny? What on earth is going on with it? Because it's a pretty specialized environment. It has high humidity levels, and there's human apocrine glands. And these are glands that don't really produce sweat. They produce what I and other people think is actually a food for microbes. It is an odorless food, and is released an incredible density out of your armpit. Armpits in and of themselves have no odor. Your hair has no odor. Most of your body has no odor. Those odors are all microbial. Bacteria thrive on the perspiration released by our apocrine glands. But they aren't active until we reach puberty, which is why babies smell sweet. But teenagers don't. So why are we feeding microbes in our armpits? We have hints. We have parts of answers in other species. Lemurs have these same glands that kind of go across the chest. And in that case, the lemurs seem to use them for identifying each, each other. Are you my cousin or not my cousin? Body odor helps the lemur to determine if a prospective partner is too closely related. Sexual attraction is literally about chemistry. Other mammals don't have their glands in their armpits. They're around their anus and sexual organs. It looks like as we started to stand up more and as we interacted with each other like this, that if we were gonna sniff each other, the, the hair and the smell had to move up. Many our armpits have a major influence on how we date and mate. It's not just muscles or bikinis that brings men and women together. It's the smell of our personal wildlife. Bacteria thrive in every nook and cranny of your body. And one of the richest ecosystems is your navel. It's a tiny crater a scar that we carry through life, and we barely give a thought to it. But for scientists at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, the navel is a place of infinite mystery. This is the home of the Belly Button Biodiversity Project. Hundreds of volunteers have been recruited to twirl a cotton swab in their belly button to help find new species. The power of our research comes from the fact that it will be able to sample so many different citizens as scientists. And you kind of can't 
harness that power unless people are engaged in the project. Welcome to the Daily Planet Theater. This Brian awesome Mello bills himself as a microbial comedian. Event. We'll be talking about some citizen science projects and about the life that lives on us. We'll be talking about tiny life, which is really fascinating. An infectious disease walks into a bar. The bartender says, we don't serve infectious diseases in this bar. The infectious disease says, well, you're not a very good host. <laughs> If I can make you laugh, maybe that'll make you more open-minded to the subject, and maybe it'll make it more memorable. And we want you to take the swab and be really careful. Um, just loosen it up, okay? Lift up, get it nice and good, get all and the gunk out, all the microbes out. Yeah, so while that's happening, you're actually getting individual living organisms on that swab. Like, just by touching to it, yeah, yeah. Not squirrels or anything, but like <laughs> bacteria, archaeans, protists. Uh, dogs, fungus. cats. Yeah, dogs are really unlikely, although it is a deep belly button, so I, I can't, yeah, I can't rule anything out. Great I'm, I'm not looking, I'm trying not to look, <laughs> but, but we'll see it if it's on the swab. No, no I keep it clean. I probably don't have anything in it. In fact, the belly button is crawling with life. It's protected from the chemical warfare of soap. And it's usually covered up from the ravages of weather all of which makes it a prime candidate for the discovery of new species. For a long time, it's been argued that the tropical rainforest canopy is the last frontier. Um, and it's true that we know very little about that, that canopy. Um, but we know, we know no more about our own bodies. The belly button survey has revealed previously unimagined species on our body. One person was carrying a form of archaic life only ever seen before in the most extreme environment on Earth, in deep ocean vents. What's interesting is that if we look at bacterial diversity in the human belly button, we have a huge amount of variations. You know, among 60 individuals, there was not one species of bacterium that was found in all 60 of those individuals. Like our retinal patterns, fingerprints, and our DNA, the wildlife in our belly button is unique. It's our microbial signature, but it's in a constant state of flux. The places we go, the food we eat, the people we meet, they all affect our microbial jungle. This is our Costa Rica, right? This is our area where we go on the body to really find our huge amount of diversity. Um, compared to the armpit, that's certainly true. So far, the North Carolina team has identified 2,300 bacteria species. That's four times the diversity of all bird species in North America. And this abundant harvest has come from just 60 belly buttons. So on your body overall, you have thousands of species. Most of them are not named. Some people maybe have a lot less than others. Some people have hundreds of species living in their belly button. Some people have as few as six species living in their belly button. And having fewer species um, is associated with poor health outcomes. And so it increases your odds of getting sick. Maybe the words bacteria and microbes, they have all like sort of negative connotations to most people. So maybe they need a rebranding. Diminutive super friends. 